Hey guys, I am in desperate need to declutter some makeup. At last count, I had 118 eyeshadow palettes, I believe. I do not have a dedicated beauty filming room, and I have to be kind of creative with my makeup storage. So I'm starting with eyeshadow palettes. I'm gonna show you my current collection and go through it and do an eyeshadow palette declutter. What you see here is the top drawer of my antique vanity. This is where I get ready every day in my bedroom and my high-end palettes that I rotate through are in here, but there's a lot that has been neglected lately that I'm just not reaching for because I don't see them. I just I have too much. It's time to give some of these to some people that can really truly show them some love. I have my drugstore palettes here to the left. I also have some overflow storage in the guest room and I have a bank of drawers in my bedroom where I have some palettes that I've been needing to try and rotate through. I've already put that on the floor which is where I'm going to be sitting and my larger palettes live on top of my vanity. So that is how everything is kind of organized the best way that I can. I have no idea how this declutter is going to go, if I'm gonna get rid of a lot or a little, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, here's what we have. I'm gonna do my best to go through this in some kind of a systematic way, but I'm not making any promises. <laughs> Starting out with the Persona Cosmetics Color Theory Copper Palette. This is such a great compact, palette great quality if you haven't tried persona cosmetics the color theory palettes are the way to go there's a couple of variations there's a pink one the copper and i know there's another one but i'm blanking on it this one is great for blue eyes which i do have although i think other eye shades would really be flattered by this as well the formula is just super soft blendable creamy smooth all the good things the shimmers are equally as good as the mattes i will definitely be keeping this i'm going to go ahead and pull out my other persona palettes and show you those before i go into these i forgot to give you the usual beauty youtuber disclaimer that the products that i'm discarding are either going to friends or family or if they're old i'm just throwing them out but for the purposes of this particular declutter i'm just going to say they're going into the declutter pile i'm going to allocate them once the declutter is over this is the first persona identity palette i get a ton of use out of this palette as you can tell it's just great for any occasion this was the original palette that kind of sucked everybody in and it's perfect for daytime for nighttime the shimmers are stunning and they apply beautifully with a brush I feel like a lot of shimmers you need to use your finger not with this absolutely one of my favorite palettes of all time actually and this year persona launched identity 2 which is a lot more colorful but you can get some surprisingly wearable looks out of this palette i took over their instagram stories one day which is why there's a lot of blue in here i did just kind of a wearable smoky soft blue look but i really love love this palette and this is a great complement to the first identity palette if you just want to amp up your look so i'm definitely keeping these two this is the flower beauty shimmer and shade eyeshadow palette in the shade golden natural i feel like it looks pretty overall but i never really reach for this I don't know why exactly. I think I just have other drugstore palettes that I prefer over this one. The quality is okay. I just wasn't ever really in love with it. So I'm gonna pass it on to someone who might be. I just feel like there's people out there that will get a lot of joy from these products that are not being used and, and given love to. So I'm going to declutter this. I have a couple of Sigma palettes in here, this one being the Enchanted. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's very ethereal and I will definitely be keeping this. I just feel like the looks that I can get from this palette are a little bit different than a lot of palettes out there. And I think that the quality of Sigma is a little bit underrated with their eyeshadow palettes, which brings me to the Sigma Warm Neutrals. I also think this is very underrated. The color story is really beautiful and a little bit different than a lot of other warm neutral palettes that you see out there. It's really, really pretty for fall. These are just two very different color stories, different from other palettes that I have. And I think that once I clear this clutter out, I will definitely get more use out of these two palettes. This is the Huda Beauty New Nude Palette. It's such a pretty soft nude palette that has some pops of lavender, some blush, some neutral, and of course those really glimmery shades that are what make this 
palettes stand out. The quality is definitely here and I just have not used this enough because I have too many palettes, which is the purpose of this declutter. So I am going to hold on to this in hopes that I will use it more. If I don't, this will be in my next declutter for sure. Let's go ahead and hit up the Urban Decay section, starting with Urban Decay Beached. I really enjoy this palette. I wish they hadn't discontinued it because I feel like, I don't know, it's just a really pretty beachy palette. I know a lot of us talk about not using or keeping palettes that are discontinued and we get fussed at from a lot of our viewers for that but the issue is is that when we wear them you guys want to go out and buy them and we can't direct you to them and so it is kind of an issue i'm going to put this to the side and decide in a little bit because i feel like i might have some other shadow palettes that have these colors in it that might be available now. So I'm gonna put this to the side. This is the Urban Decay Naked Heat, which I know a lot of people don't really like this palette because it is, you know, too warm, but I really do like it. I like a lot of warm tones though. However, I think I might get a warm toned pile going over here, but as of now, I'm gonna hold on to this. I could change my mind by the end of this declutter though, but it is a really, really pretty warm palette and it has great quality as well. So as of now, I'm keeping this. Here's another palette that I have not played with all that much because of too many palettes, but I feel like there's a mixed bag on the reviews of this. This is the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded. I really like the colors in this. I know some people were thrown off by the peachy shade retro in here. I wanna play with this some more. I'm definitely gonna keep this because I think it has a nice mix of neutrals to get a great everyday look. This replaced my Naked palette. I did get another Naked palette to replace my old one and I gave it away in a giveaway just because I have so many neutral palettes. So I'm like the one beauty YouTuber that no longer has the original Urban Decay Naked. However, I do have the Urban Decay Naked Cherry and this is a really cool palette, but I really just don't reach for it. I know a lot of people really like it. I think I'm gonna pass this on. I'm not one that wears a lot of red berry toned shadows. I have peachy shades in other palettes and I feel like someone else would get a lot of use out of this. And I do have some other palettes. If I wanna reach for berry tones, I can do that. So this is gonna to go to a new home. There are a couple of palettes in this declutter that I really, really wish were not limited edition. And this is one of them. This is the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. This is one of the most versatile, colorful palettes that can also be used for every day that I have. It's just gorgeous. The quality is there. You know what I mean? The mirror is large in it. I think you can see that. You can get a neutral look. You can get a colorful look daytime, nighttime. It's really just an all-in-one. Definitely keeping this. I have a few ColourPop palettes. This is one that has never been touched. There's something about it that just is not me. I think it's the fuchsia, the purple combined with the turquoise. I don't know. And the bright yellow. I'm gonna pass this on. But this ColourPop Dream Street palette has always been one of my favorite palettes. I absolutely adore it. This shade right here is coming off a little bright on camera. It's got just enough subtlety to it, I guess that's the word I'm looking for, to where it really, really works as a transition shade if you buff it out enough. And I love, love these two blues. I, this is one of my favorite palettes. I'm definitely keeping this. These two palettes look identical, but they are not. This is the Double Entendre, and this is the I Think I Love You palette. This one is the Double Entendre palette. This one is I Think I Love You. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but right now I think I'm gonna keep them both. I really, really love the quality of ColourPop shadows. And I like that the I Think I Love You has a black and the gold. And it's got this kind of silvery champagne shade right here and the bronzy, whereas this one is a little more kind of neutral and subdued. Yeah, I'm gonna keep them both. I really love me some ColourPop. I have three Marc Jacobs iconic palettes. This one is called Glambition. I talk about this one all the time as being the perfect travel palette. The quality is here. They last, they apply beautifully. The shimmers are great, the mattes are great, and you have everything you need for any kind of an eye look. You have highlight, transition, shimmer shades, lid shades, and two shades to line with or deepen your crease or whatever. Definitely keeping this. This is Scandalust. Same thing. Love it. I don't wear it quite as much as Glambition, but I still really love it. And this is Stiletto. This I thought was limited edition, but it is still out. Great cool toned palette. I love this sheer 
silver here as a topper. Definitely keeping that. This is the Bare Minerals Hidden Treasure Palette, which I really loved. The thing that kills me about this palette is that I felt like you got so little product for the size of the palette. There was a lot of wasted space, but it was a great neutral, cool toned palette that I find that I very rarely wear because it was available for such a limited time. And I just reach for other things like that Marc Jacobs stiletto palette or just other cool toned palettes. The quality is here. I really think the shades are beautiful, but I'm going to give this to someone else. That is something that kind of bothers me about Bare Minerals is that they don't make their good palettes available for a long period of time. They discontinue them so then no one can get them. So I'm going to give this to someone who will enjoy it. This is the somewhat new Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur palette, and these shades are meant to be applied with a finger. I did like this when I first got it, and I do think the quality is there. I just find that I don't reach for it. So um, I'm gonna give this to someone that will enjoy it and reach for it more than I do. It's got this matte packaging like the NARS that drives me crazy because I can't keep it clean. I'm not sure if this has an official name now that she has a couple of palettes out, but this is the KKW Beauty palette. <laughs> That's all that it says on the back. I haven't been using this enough. I've been neglecting it. It's really beautiful. The quality is great. I'm going to hold on to this in hopes that I will use it more, hopefully now that my palette collection will be a little bit smaller. This is such a beautiful palette. This is the Laura Mercier Hidden Treasures palette. A nice, really different color story. Laura Mercier shadows are so underrated and have such great quality. I'm gonna hold on to this. It may still be available on her website. I'll be sure and link anything I can down below if it is still available for you guys, as long as I have room in my description box. But um, yes, I, I really, really love the quality of this. I have several of these iHeart Revolution palettes. They're really cute and they've been in my to try out drawer for some time. Sometimes if things just keep hanging out in that drawer and I keep not trying them, it's just time to put them in a giveaway. This might be one of those items. It looks really pretty. There's a lot of shimmers in here and the color story is really nice. It looks like it's supposed to be like one of the Too Faced palettes. I'm gonna put this in a giveaway for somebody because I feel like they would really like it. And by the way, this was called the Mint Chocolate bar, I believe. This is called the Chocolate Rose Gold palette. Really, really pretty from I Heart Revolution. It's got those berry tones that I just don't need more of. So I'm also going to put this in a giveaway. This is the I Heart Revolution One True Love palette. Super, super cute. More berry purple tones. Uh, I like that it's really compact. I am going to gift this to someone as well. And I have two of these little mini palettes from I Heart Revolution. This white one is called Nudes. <laughs> it's a very simple name. Well, let me look at this one first. I think I'm gonna keep this one. This one is called Chalk Orange. This one is called Nudes. I'm gonna keep Chalk Orange. I just like this color story a little bit more. I have two palettes from The Balm. I have In the Balm of Your Hand, which is technically a face palette, and I have Meet Matrimony. So In the Balm of Your Hand has shadows along the top and cheek and bronzer at the bottom, which is a great concept. I have just not utilized this concept but maybe once. So I'm going to give this to someone because I think they will probably really like it. I just never use this. I have other face palettes that I reach for that are a little more compact and I feel like this could go to a good home. For the most part, I like the quality of the balm and I feel like someone could really use this. This is Meet Matrimony, which is all mattes. It's got a nice shade selection. I, again, just don't reach for this. I'm going to give this to someone who could enjoy it. Let's declutter some Tarte. If you have seen any of my travel videos, you know this is my absolute number one favorite travel palette. This is the Tarte Man Eater palette. It has literally everything you need in there to get any type of eye you need. It's just a great neutral palette. It's got shimmers, highlight, transition, liner shades, shades to deepen the crease. It's compact. Just absolutely adore this palette. The quality is great as well. Definitely keeping that. This is a limited edition palette called Don't Quit Your Daydream. I liked this, but I never reach for it because I feel like I have all of these shades in other palettes. 
I'm going to declutter this. This is the Tartlet Toasted palette. Very, very pretty warm palette. I know I kept Naked Heat, but it has a little bit more red to it. So I am gonna keep Tartlet Toasted as well. It's just really, really pretty and warm. I like having palettes like this for the summer and the fall. Well, any season really. Now, some of these palettes in this declutter are being kept because they are relatively new and I have not gotten to dip into them a lot and I need to test them out and and just play with them like these two by terry terribly paris palettes these are limited edition but they are so stunning i mean look at that intricate embossing this one is paris by light this one is paris by night absolutely beautiful i'm definitely keeping these i have not been able to bring myself to dip into them they're just so pretty but i'm keeping them i forgot to show these when i was showing the bare minerals shadows earlier. These are the two Gen Nude palettes that I have. I have Rose and I have Neutral. This one is Rose and this one is Neutral. I kind of think the name should be switched, but that's just me. I'm keeping them both. Both of these showed up in my travel palettes video. They're awesome for travel. The quality is fantastic. Super creamy, super blendable. The shimmers are great. The mattes are great and they are compact and I love the size of the mirror. So I am keeping these. I have three palettes from the brand Alter Ego. If you are not familiar with them, they make similar palettes to popular palettes. For example, this Daydream palette is supposed to be very similar to the Huda Beauty New Nudes palette that I showed you earlier. I have showed these in some dupes videos and the quality of these is superb. So I am holding on to these. I just like having inexpensive options to show you guys as well because not everybody has huge budgets. This is the Sahara palette. Uh, this one I think is supposed to dupe the Natasha Denona Biba palette. And this is the Aurora palette, which is supposed to be similar to the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. And again, the quality is great. I always recommend these for less expensive options to those higher end palettes. I have two palettes from a brand called Carity, and they are actually a very good charitable brand. This is just their matte palette. The quality of these shadows is actually pretty good. I just find I don't reach for this. This is just not really my vibe. I'm gonna give this to someone. And this is their Rosé All Day palette, which I actually really think is pretty. I just don't typically reach for a super pink toned palette. So this is kind of just being wasted on me. So I'm going to declutter these. I have three of these Wet n Wild palettes. I'm keeping all of them because I think they're really great. I really like Not a Basic Peach for spring and summer. It's just unique. And for drugstore, the quality of these is great and they're super inexpensive too. Comfort Zone is just a great fall palette. I love getting nighttime or everyday looks from it. And Nude Awakening can of course be used any time of year. And I feel like it's a great nude. It's not too cool, it's not too warm. It's just that perfect in between. And I know I had one of their trios around here, but I can't seem to find it. I have five Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes and five face palettes to go through. This is Uptown Girl and this is Golden Goddess. I really like both of these and find them very, very wearable. Uptown Girl is my newest acquisition. I might be playing with it in a live stream that I'm doing today, which will have already aired. I've really been liking this kind of gray blue color, this cool tone shade. I like the quality of these. I really love how easily they apply. And I have this newer palette here called Charlotte Darling. I got this very recently from Sephora and I really love it. It's a great warm tone palette. The quality is there and it's nice and compact, very easy to travel with. I really enjoy this. It would be great for blue or green eyes. I mean, any eye color really. I just, I like it a lot keeping it. The palette on the top is last year's holiday palette called Stars in Your Eyes. The palette on the bottom is the new Pillow Talk palette. I know you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I'm going to declutter the Stars in Your Eyes palette because I just find that since I got the Pillow Talk palette, I'm not wearing it as much and I feel like someone else could really enjoy it 
more because I just I have too many eyeshadow palettes, you guys, and I want to give this to someone who will really enjoy it. It's a beautiful palette. I just find that when I get a new Charlotte palette, a limited edition palette, especially for the holidays, it replaces the one that I had before, and I didn't get the shears, but you know who knows I may get next year's. But the Pillow Talk palette has replaced that one in terms of usage. So I'm gonna keep the pillow talk and purge stars in your eyes. Okay, I have five of her face palettes. I have the newest one, which is Gorgeous Glowing Beauty. I am keeping that. I love it for just a warm, sun-kissed, beautiful, glowing goddess look. Love it, and I love the packaging. This will make a great gift for somebody you really just don't know what to buy them, by the way. I have Smoky Eye Beauty. Again, love this, really great, different from Gorgeous Glowing Beauty. I love these for travel because you have everything you need in these palettes. I have Beauty Glow. This is not available anymore, I don't think, but this was one of my favorites. I use this a ton, so I am keeping this. I have Natural Beauty, which I really enjoyed, but I don't use as much because it's not available anymore and it is a little bit light on me for my light medium skin tone. So I'm gonna pass this on, believe it or not. And finally, I have Seductive Beauty which I do really like because I like those gray shades in the top. I'm keeping this one. This is the Revolution Neutrals versus Neutrals palette. I really like this palette. I feel like it's a little bit different than a lot of drugstore palettes that you see out there. I like the quality. I like using it. I am definitely going to keep this. And I enjoy having drugstore options to show you guys in videos. And some of them end up having dupes for high-end shades in them that I discover later. So I'm keeping this. This is Revolution, the Emily Edit The Needs palette. This is a face palette that you know can be used for travel, can be used for home when you're wanting to get ready quickly. This is a nice palette and it's an inexpensive option for an all-in-one face palette. I like having this on hand. I like having an inexpensive face palette option for you guys. It's Emily Noel's palette. I'm definitely keeping this. This is Revolution, the Emily Edit, the Wants palette, which has so many beautiful colors in it. Really nice. I like having all these options sitting on my vanity. I'm definitely keeping this. It's a nice economical palette with tons of options that I can show you guys and use as well. This is a ColourPop palette that was hidden from me when I went through the ColourPop section. This is the Disney Designer Collection palette. This has the best silver in it ever, and it's just a really pretty palette. So I don't know if they brought this back. I know they brought some of the Disney things back at one point, but I'm definitely keeping this. This is a palette from Buxom that I custom made from shadows that they sent me. Their shadow quality is really, really nice. And I've been enjoying playing with these. I need to play with them some more. I have two of these Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes. I have Coral Obsessions. And this obviously is the Coral Tone palette. I thought I was gonna reach for this so much when I first got it, and I really don't. I don't know why I don't use it. I feel like I, I might just have all of these shades in another palette, and I don't travel with it because there's not a highlight shade. There's not a true deep shade in here. It's just kind of like, I don't know, middle ground shades. So I'm, I'm gonna actually declutter this. This is Topaz Obsessions. I use this one more. I don't know why. I think it's because it does have that deeper shade in it. It's also got a nice base shade, lid shade. It's got some, I, I don't know. I just really like the tones of the lid shades. And this is a great transition shade when you really buff it out and go in lightly. I really enjoy this one, so I'm gonna keep it. And I like how compact these are as well. I missed an Urban Decay palette. This is the Kristen Leanne palette. I did like the color story of this. I have these shades in other palettes. I am going to pass this on. It's really pretty though. I do like the design of it overall, but I don't, I don't need this. I started with Tarte, but I didn't finish Tarte. I don't know what happened there. This is kind of a face palette called Be Your Own Tartist. I had originally got this for travel. I've never traveled with it. It's a fine palette. I just don't use it, so I'm going to give it to someone who will. I really do like the quality of Tarte blushes and Tarte shadows, and I, I think someone will really enjoy this. This is Tartlet in Bloom. This is one of my top favorite palettes of all time. I've had this for a while, and I haven't been reaching for it, 
because I just have so many palettes and I still will when this is over just because of the nature of what I do. But I adore this. And I guess my main thing is that I need to kind of pull this out, use it again and make sure it hasn't gotten old on me. But yeah, I'm definitely keeping this. I have several Too Faced palettes. The first is this natural matte palette. This is in the tin packaging. This was actually a backup palette that I got, but I'm kind of worried it's old, um, you know, since it is in this packaging. Sometimes backups are a good idea. Sometimes they're not if they're kept for too long. So I'm going to actually toss this because I think it's past its prime. This is the Natural Eyes palette. This is one of my favorite palettes. I love the quality of this palette. I had the version in the tin packaging and I replaced it with this version because I just, I love it. I love lining with these two shades up here. I know this is a shimmer shade and it looks like it won't line well, but it actually does. Uh, this is just a great neutral palette. My video cut out a while ago, but the gist of it was, I like this palette, it's great, I'm keeping it. This is the Just Peachy Mattes palette. This is a matte eyeshadow dream for those of us with blue eyes, even green eyes, and if you like warm palettes. It's just really pretty, it's great to keep on hand to reach for if you just need a quick matte shade. So I'm definitely keeping this one. So I skipped the original chocolate bar and went straight for the Semi Sweet. I haven't used this in a hot minute. It is a great neutral palette with, you know, a slight pop of color. I just have other neutral palettes that I've been reaching for. I think someone else will really, really enjoy it. So I am going to give this away. The quality is there. I just, I, I, I can't keep this many palettes, so I am going to declutter this one. This is the infamous Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. I mean, remember when everybody went crazy over this? It really is a great palette. I love the color story in here, and I am keeping this. I just got a whiff of it just now when I opened it. The scent doesn't bother me. I love the quality, and I would like to reach for this some more. I am definitely keeping this. Back to Urban Decay. <laughs> I keep leaving out palettes, guys. This is the Naked Basics palette. This is such a great compact palette to have on hand if you need to reach for some neutral matte shades. I find I reach for this shade to highlight a ton. This is a great neutral transition shade. The black is great to line with, so I am keeping this. This is Urban Decay Naked Petite Heat. This is a great compact warm matte palette, but because I'm keeping Urban Decay Naked Heat, and because I am keeping this Charlotte Darling palette that's also warm, I am going to declutter Urban Decay Naked Petite Heat. I have three BH Cosmetics palettes. I'm gonna start with Desert Oasis. I thought I was gonna use this more when I got it. I think the colors are beautiful, but I find these bronzers to be a little bit too warm for me, a little bit too pigmented because my skin tone is already warm. They just apply a little bit too muddy and there's just too much shimmer in this palette for me, but I think someone else might really, really like it. So I am going to declutter this. This is the Solar Flare palette. It's got 18 really beautiful baked eyeshadows in it. And I have not used this yet to any extent. I think I've just swatched a couple. I'm gonna keep this so that I can play with this a little bit. They look really pretty and I do like the quality of BH Cosmetics overall. And this last one is the original BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. This was actually what made me fall in love with BH Cosmetics in the first place. I really have enjoyed the quality of this. It's got baked shadows around the outside, mattes on the inside, and I think this is just a highlighter on the inside. But um, I just, I don't know, I just really enjoy this palette. I think they have another Zodiac palette out now. It's really cool. You get a ton of variety with this palette. I am keeping this. This is the Sephora Pro new nudes palette, and I don't know if they still carry this or not. I like having it on hand but I'm not really reaching for it the way I should. I think I'm gonna give this to someone else because I feel like I reach for other nude palettes over this palette. I think my intentions were good when I bought it. I've given it a little bit of love and now it's time for someone else to, to love this palette. I have four Pixie by Petra palettes over here. I had an extra, but it turned out to be a highlight palette. This one is Natural Beauty. This one is Reflex Light. These two are actually the same thing. This one is a collab with Heart Defensor. I feel like all of these look kind of the same to me. I am just going to pick one and stick with it. I feel like a lot of the shades in this one look pretty identical. I'm gonna keep one of these 
and declutter the rest. I only have one NARS palette, the Narcissist Loaded palette. I just, I don't think I'm ready to get rid of it just yet. This is tough. I'm gonna put it in the maybe pile. I have two CoverGirl palettes here, Peach Punch, and this is Nudes something. I think it's just nudes. I have not really been that impressed with these. And when I reach for drugstore palettes, these aren't two of the ones I typically reach for, like with other drugstore brands. So I am going to give these to someone who might enjoy them a little bit more than I do. And so these are going to be decluttered. I have two Maybelline palettes here, the Lemonade Craze, and this is the City Mini Palette in Rooftop Bronzes. I don't use this one that much because it's a little bit too shimmery for me overall. I do use and love this one, and I have the purple version of this too somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I'm keeping both of them. I have the Natasha Denona Eyeshadow Palette 8, which is one of my absolute favorite palettes. I feel like you can't find this everywhere. It's got this beautiful warm silver shade and a couple of kind of olivey greens, a really beautiful silvered peach, and then just a champagne. It's so, so pretty on the eyes. And here's mini glam and mini nude. Both of these are staying, I think, for the money. These are absolutely great palettes. The quality is here on all of these. I know some of the Natasha Denona smaller palettes, the quality isn't the same as in her larger palettes. Love all three of these keeping. I have three larger Natasha Denona palettes. The Biba palette, which is one of my favorite neutral palettes. It lives on top of my vanity. Truly a, a gem. I would get my hands on this if you can, if you want a great quality neutral palette. It has just everything that you need and just different types of formulas as well to create different looks. The Natasha Denona Sunrise palette is my newest acquisition and I haven't played with this a ton yet. So I need to play with this some more. Definitely keeping. It's really, really beautiful. And this is the Natasha Denona Star Palette. I feel like this is such an iconic palette. I coveted it for so long and Beautylish sent it to me a while back and it also lives on top of my vanity. I pull from it a lot. Um, yeah, I love this. Definitely staying. I'm one of the only YouTubers that does not have any of the <laughs> regular Lorac palettes. I only have the Lorac Unzipped Gold. I am going to declutter this. I feel like this has passed its prime. It's kind of old and I never reach for it anyway. I have a stack of Milani palettes here. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you I'm going to keep all of them, but I'm gonna run through them very quickly so you can just see what I have. These are the Everyday Eyes palettes. On the top is Earthy Eyes, and on the bottom is Must Have Neutrals. The quality of these is great. I like having a compact drugstore option. I love the warmth of the top palette. I like that you can get any kind of eye look from both of these, and I love how neutral the bottom palette is, so definitely keeping. Gilded Coast and Gilded Nude are my two newest palettes from Milani. I've just begun to play with these and I'm liking the quality so far and the color stories are just a little bit different, so I'm definitely keeping these. This is the Hyper Pigmented Eye and Face Palette. I just thought this was really pretty for a face palette. I mean, it's mostly just highlighters and eyeshadows, so it's not really a true face palette, but it just looks nice and pretty. I haven't even dipped into this yet. This is one of my favorite drugstore palettes. This is the Milani Bold Obsessions. I love the color story, love the versatility in here. The quality for a drugstore palette is great and it's it's really just a pretty palette. Speaking of versatile drugstore palettes, the NYX Warm Neutrals palette is really great and you get a ton of shades in here as well. This is a little bit warmer than the Milani, but it's still great to have on hand for mattes and shimmers. So keeping that. I have two Thrive palettes. This one is the number two Focus Eyeshadow Quad. I got this one because I really didn't have enough cool toned options and it is gray, but it's wearable gray. I really, really enjoy this palette a lot and the quality of Thrive eyeshadows is really nice. Blendable, creamy, smooth. And this is the Warm Neutrals Perfect Eyeshadow Palette. I love that you can use those bigger shades as highlights because the pans are so big. 
but it gives you everything you need for a great eyeshadow look. And it's not too big of a palette either. It's a nice size. And I will be keeping both of these. I found another Urban Decay palette tucked away over there. This is the Earthly Elements palette. This was a cool concept. I haven't used this in a long time. It's a lot of colorful shimmers, which can be good for certain looks. I am going to declutter this and give this to someone who will use this. This is the Becca Ocean Jewels eyeshadow palette. They had some really pretty toppers in here to go on other eyeshadows. I liked the concept. There's a lot of wasted space. I don't do really well with circular palettes. I am going to give this to someone who will put it to good use. This is the MAC and Patrick Star Glam AF palette. This is kind of the perfect little quad, actually. I am gonna hold on to this because I would like to maybe try and dupe this with the revamped MAC shadows that are coming out soon. That could be a fun little project, but this is just the perfect neutral palette. It's really good, and the quality of MAC shadows, you just, you can't beat it. This is the Lila B B Alluring Eyeshadow Quad. It's actually really pretty, but I have not hardly touched it. So I do want to hold on to it to maybe use it some more. These are shaped like stones. They're heavy. They're really show pieces, but that doesn't always mean that the makeup is great inside. And I think I've only played with it like once. So I would like to use it some more. This is the Smashbox Photo Edit Eyeshadow Trio in Nudie Pick. It's the perfect neutral to travel with. I talked about that in my travel palette video. It's small, it's compact three shades for just a neutral, easy, easy eye look. And the quality is there. I am keeping. This is of course Tati Beauty's Volume 1 palette. While I don't use every formulation in this palette, I have been pulling from it on occasion for just, you know, different types of shadows, different shades as well. There's some versatility here, so I'm going to hold on to this and get some use out of it. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Collection with Casey Holmes. I really, really love the butter lip that was in here. I use that pretty regularly, and I like the perfume, surprisingly enough. I actually love the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, Blush Formula. The shadows are pretty decent, but this is just way too bulky to store for me. I am someone who is trying to streamline my storage and this is just not practical at all for me, but someone else might be fine with it. So I'm going to declutter it. I feel like as far as PR goes, Perfusion sends out quite a bit, you know, which is nice, but it makes for a lot of product buildup. And I do have some other types of products. I should probably do just a Profusion video. I'm going to pick out one of these palettes to keep and give the rest away because i mean this is just the eyeshadow palettes i have other products from them too it's it's a it's a lot so i think i'm going to choose one i'm going to go ahead and set these aside and pick from the big palettes because i think that's going to give me more to choose from i'm not going to keep the mirage because i feel like that's a lot of red in there. I'm gonna keep the naturals and the chocolates and I'm gonna get rid of the rest. Okay, one of the palettes I was sent for Makeup Obsession was a highlight palette. These two are shadow palettes. That is the Daydream and this is the Dusk palette. And I'm gonna give both of these away because I just know I'm not going to end up using them and they're just gonna sit here and someone else can actually get some use out of them. This is my Tarte homemade palette. And actually, you know what, I'm gonna put these in an eyeshadow singles video because that's a lot to go through. This is a palette that I made with my Sydney Grace single shadows, keeping those for sure. Love, love, love. This is actually a beauty pie face palette that's supposed to be like the Charlotte Tilbury palettes. And I don't mind it for the price. Beauty pie just gives inexpensive options for, you know, more expensive makeup. But because I have so many other Charlotte Tilbury face palettes. I am going to gift this to someone who will get more use out of it than I will. I have three Tom Ford quads. I'm keeping them all. This is Soleil at Loon, one of the limited editions that came out recently. This is Coco Mirage, which in my opinion is a classic, but they just discontinued it for whatever reason. I cannot even imagine but I'm keeping it. And this is Soleil Diver, which is just so, so, so pretty. I love the quality of Tom Ford shadows. They're kind of sheer, but they just blend out so beautifully. This is a magnetic Ofra Pro palette that was given out in some subscription box that had six Ofra shadows in it. 
I'm going to actually give this away because it's taking up space right now and someone else can really enjoy these shadows as well as the palette. We're now at the five Anastasia palettes that I have. I have been hanging on to this master palette by Mario for a long time. While I do enjoy this palette, I recognize that you can't get it anymore when I wear it, but I feel like I can also get similar shades from other palettes that I have. I am going to give this to someone that will enjoy it because I don't really reach for it that much. This is Modern Renaissance, a true Anastasia classic. I am definitely keeping this. It's just got all the beautiful tones in it, the Anastasia quality. It is staying for sure. This is Soft Glam, the neutral palette, although I do think it leans more warm than neutral, but um, yes, staying. This is the Sultry palette. This is just one of the most beautiful palettes ever. I do hope they bring this back from limited edition status. It is staying. I just can get such beautiful nighttime looks. Uh, anytime looks really, but specifically special nighttime looks. And of course, Norvina, which I think for springtime, I don't know, anytime really. Some of the most beautiful rose gold type looks, lavenders. It's just truly a, a gem of a palette to have. And I wavered on this for a long time and didn't get it and finally broke down and got it, and I'm really glad I did. I have these three pending palettes here that I was waiting till the end to make a decision on. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter these two. I think I'm just holding on to them to hold on to them. I don't think I'm going to use them any more than I do now. It's just funny how once the two piles are laid out, I'm realizing I don't need these. And when I look at the Naked Heat here on the bottom and the Pillow Talk palette on the top, I feel like the look that I wanna get from the Naked Heat, I can get from the Pillow Talk palette along with other palettes that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of Naked Heat as well. All right, so I am gonna show you what the piles on my floor looked like when they were all laid out, and I'm gonna tell you the exact number that I kept versus decluttered and all that. But I had to go ahead and show you what my drawer looks like. Yes, singular drawer <laughs> looks like when all the palettes I kept are put in it. I went from having this drawer plus the drawer next to it, plus two other drawers full of 125 palettes, it turns out, to being able to fit everything high-end and drugstore in this one drawer. And I still have some space to spare and empty drawers. So it's a great feeling. So we can go ahead and get to the exact numbers here in a second, but I just wanted to show you this because I'm actually feeling a load off. I feel like I can actually see all my palettes at once, which makes it so much easier for me to just see and enjoy what I have. Okay, here is what we have as a result of this eyeshadow palette collection and declutter. This is the declutter pile. This is the keep pile. And this deck of palettes right here, these are palettes that I am keeping to test them out, try them out. I haven't even gotten into these palettes yet. I did better than I thought I was gonna do. I ended up decluttering over a third of my collection. I know it's not half or anything like that, but I am very pleased. I am decluttering, purging 46 palettes and keeping 79, which is still a lot by normal everyday standards, but when you deal with makeup day in and day out and use different types of things for different types of videos, that's pretty normal by beauty YouTuber standards. And who knows what's gonna happen in the next declutter. I could keep some of these and realize I'm not using them as much as I thought after all and declutter them in the next round. Several times throughout this video, I've referenced a travel palette video. If you haven't seen that, I will link that for you so you can catch that. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somewhat informative. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.